You were about to enter Chuck versus the podcast, the place for people who love Chuck and the people who work on Chuck. The only show that takes you behind the scenes with the stars. Yvonne Strahovski. Zachary Levi. Joshua Gomez. Ryan McPartland. Adam Baldwin. Sarah Lancaster. Interactive interviews. Julia Wing. Phil Clemmer. All the cast. Dixon High. Tony Hale. Scott Krinsky. Marcus for Lawrence. Anita Federici. Fun hosts. This is Mel. This is Liz. Now you can see how wacko we are. The writers. Ali Adler. Scott Rosenbaum. Zev Barrow. The editors. Matt Barber. Jeff Granville. Kevin Mock. Contests. We are giving away a check press kit. The directors. Jason Enzler. Norman Buckley. The guest stars. Steve Austin. Kristen Griff. The music. This is Tim Jones. Guest hosts. I'm Kaylee from Toronto. Conventions. Lights come up and here comes Jester out on stage. Set visits. This is the guy right here. And much more. Are you ready? This is Mel. This is Liz. And welcome to Check versus the Podcast episode 69 for Friday, October 1st, 2010. We are sans gray this week. He's having some technical difficulties, so Liz and I will be helming this episode. Let's head to some news. Well, the ratings for Monday's primetime shows are in, and it looks decent for Chuck. Approximately 5.3 million viewers tuned in, which is a dip from the season premiere, but the 18 to 49 demo rating stayed level at 2.0. So it's, you know, no nail-biter yet, guys. So by comparison, at the time slot competitor, Dancing with the Stars, was down from a 4.6 in the demo to a 4.3, and House dropped from 4.1 in the demo to 3.7. CBS was the only network to see increases during the hour with How I Met Your Mother rising from 3.6 to 3.8, and Rules of Engagement from 3.1 to 3.2. Um, not real significant, but there it is. 90210 was flat. Elsewhere on NBC, the event fell from a 3.7 in the demo during the its premiere to 2.9 this week, while Chase fell from 2.5 to 2.1. So, um, I don't know. Not a lot of people watching Monday Night TV. Um, little note, however, NBC provided almost no promotion for Chuck again, focusing on their new series. Couple that with the expected first to second week drop, which is usual for any series, um, this isn't cause for wringing of hands or gnashing of teeth, uh, not just yet. But, you know, you guys can do um, some promoting of your own, just whatever. I mean, we've suggested ways in the past that, you know, you can get people to watch Chuck, and uh, they they worked in the past. Yeah, and we've had a lot of people complaining, why hasn't NBC been running promos? Why are they promoting their new shows? It's just the way the networks do it. Um, CBS and ABC are following the same pattern. If you notice, the bulk of their ad dollars are going to launching their new shows. Fox and the CW kind of seem to be splitting it 50-50, um, and it doesn't, you know, seem to be... Neither pattern is a, a lock. It's, you know, hit or miss either way. So I think NBC is probably happy that they've barely put any money into promoting Chuck, and it's still holding steady and even higher than the end of last season. So Exactly. From their point of view, I think it's doing fine. Mm -hmm. Please note, minor spoiler warning. Um, in casting news, news of the nerds of the world rejoice. Aziello has confirmed that none other than Summer Glau is headed to Chuck as a Greta. She'll be in episode 408. We don't have the title for that yet. But that means we'll have two Terminator alumni on the show, Linda Hamilton, the original Sarah Connor, and Summer, who appeared in the TV series. And we also have the potential for a Firefly mini reunion between Summer and Adam Baldwin, which actually Matt Mitovich from FanCast did a little digging and got confirmation that they will share at least one scene. And Chris Fedak hints that Firefly fans may get a little inside joke of our own. So watch for that. Um, this episode is slated to air on Monday, November 8th on NBC, and you can also see Summer as a regular in the NBC mid-season superhero series, The Cape. Summer Glau, yeah, you know, I was a Terminator watcher when the series was on, and uh, she did a phenomenal job, and of course, you know, um, I mean, everything else, I was never into Firefly, but uh, I did see Serenity, 
So does that make me a brown coat or no? Uh, not really. You need to watch the whole series to be a brown coat. One of these days I will. It's on my list. Anyway, Chuck's getting a new mentor in the form of The Daily Show's former correspondent, Rob R- Riggle. Azale reports that Riggle will appear in episode 408, which is also not titled yet, as Jim Rye, a super positive CIA agent tasked with helping Chuck improve his spy skills. His character is described as super smart, intensely positive, and slightly crazy. Well, it gotta be to be on the show. <laughs> this is also the episode in which Summer Glau appears, so be watching out. Right. She'll be Greta, and he'll be... Some sort of CIA agent as well, so that should be fun to watch. Well, let's talk about this week's episode, shall we? Let's. Chuck versus the Suitcase, Episode 2 of Season 4. And I would just like to mention that I am doing this with a tiny kitten on my lap. This is Sookie California. I did not name her. She is a stray that I am watching for right now. So, so far she's being quite calm, but if I suddenly flinch, it's little kitten claws. <clears throat> But uh, speaking of kittens, how about that cat fight? Yeah, how about that? Um, <laughs> I, it, it was a good, of course, you know, those the fights between Sarah and anybody, you know, are always good. They're always intense. And, um, you know, the um, choreography is really, really well done all the time, I think. Um, I, it's like a natural fit for Sarah, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah, she's so athletic and graceful about it. But, you know, I had to give a little whoop when she did that falcon punch at the end, man. Yeah. That was that was kind of awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I have not seen that move from Sarah before, so that was that was pretty cool. And then to have her, you know, in her sparkly dress doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was a pretty good fight, you know. She took down the evil supermodel. Yeah. yeah. And before that, there was also the nice juxtaposition of that kind of all-out fight between the two of them. I mean, there was no, they weren't holding their punches at all. And then you have the slap fight between Chuck and the Hulk. I mean, what was that? <laughs> right, right. Exactly where you thought you were going to see the big fight. It, it, you know, the ladies ruled the night. I loved it. That was that was pretty funny, the way they handled that. Um, I was a little distracted during the beginning of that fight when Chuck was taking out the other bodyguards with the pole because Lou Ferrigno was just standing there, like not moving, like he was a statue or something. And, yeah. But then when he just reaches out and grabs the pole, oh, okay, he's just playing it cool. <laughs> and then the slapping began. <laughs> yeah. So Lou Ferrigno, wow, huh? Aw, he had a crush on the supermodel. I know, wasn't that cute? That was pretty sweet. <laughs> Poor Sarah, she felt badly that she had to smack him down. She did, yeah. But I loved the facial expressions she went through when he was making his confession there, you know, behind his back. And she's like, er? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> she had, this was a stellar episode. This is a spotlight episode for Yvonne Strahovski, wasn't it? I think so. I absolutely think so. She's, um... Uh, she had it all going on with the uh, the action and the emotion and uh, and the comedy. Loved it. She had, she brought her comedy, and I love seeing that part of her. She's just just I don't know. She just does it so well. She does, and it's nice to finally see more and more of that. We started getting some of that at the end of season three, and it was just a delightful surprise. So it's very nice to see it continuing into season four. Yeah, I um I I'm continuing to enjoy the comfort. Um, between Chuck and Sarah, even though they have, you know, the little things that they're working out. I mean, they're a new couple, you know, there, there's going to be things that they got to work out. There's going to, I mean, this is how they learn about each other and learn how to be together is to, you know, you know, while I find out, you know, she finds out something about Chuck that that maybe she doesn't care for, but she's got to have to learn how to, you know, meet him halfway and vice versa. And, you know, this is all about, how a relationship grows to be a big a relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I got to say, I, though, that the conflict between the two of them felt a little forced. I get what they were trying to do, that we were trying, we were seeing a couple of what, what to an outsider look like minor things that mm-hmm. to them were these huge 
ob uh, not obstacles, but just these big insecurities for each character. Yeah. It just it didn't really flow that well for me. Um, I, I like I said, I get what they were trying to do. I just didn't feel like it was executed quite right. And I think part of it maybe that we left a little more on the cutting room floor in this episode than normal. Because, for example, we had Bronson Pinchot, Balky. Yeah. Who's was supposed to be some matchmaker, and I don't know. I, I think he was supposed to have more than three seconds on screen. Yeah, he had no nothing more than a walk-on role. Just a uh, walk-on, walk-off. <laughs> exactly. And I'm almost, I mean, I'm positive that's not, they don't promote a guest appearance like that the way that they did. Mm -hmm. So there must have been something, some part left on the cutting room floor and I'm wondering if that's affecting uh, my perception of, of especially the first half of the episode. It just felt a little disjointed. Yeah, I the closet scene wasn't my favorite of the night. It, it wasn't it was uncomfortable I think and it was well, I mean it was uncomfortable because my ten year old son was sitting next to me on the couch watching it. Yeah. <laughs> he eventually got up and walked out of the room. <laughs> Just because he feels uncomfortable, but you know, um, I it, it it wasn't just the shower and things like that. It was that I don't know. It just I don't know. I don't, I don't know how to put words to it, but it wasn't my favorite. I didn't. I could have done without the whole scene. Yeah, I I wish it had been done just a little bit differently because I think what we were getting there was Sarah for a change, feeling insecure about. Chuck's attraction to her like she's such a gorgeous woman and she's smart and she's funny and she's fierce you know she's the whole package but here comes the supermodel and she'd already you know Chuck's a guy the pictures of the bikini pictures it's a reaction I get that I wouldn't be thrilled if it were my significant other but you know I get it and he did try after that he was trying not to notice and not react and everything and they were playing that for laughs it just felt a little bit flat mm -hmm. um but i think what they were trying to show was that sarah had some insecurity which we were also dealing with as far as the suitcase she's she's never had a home she's still adjusting even though it's been eight nine months nine months i guess She's still adjusting to having an actual relationship that she can count on. And then I guess this is the first time it's been tested with a, you know, a beautiful woman around someone she actually felt threatened by. And yeah. I, you know, I think, I think that's what was going on on her side. And then on Chuck's side, good old Morgan brings up, you know, she hasn't even moved in. She hasn't even unpacked. And so Chuck's suddenly feeling a little insecure, like, she could, she, you know, she's ready to go at any time. She's ready to leave at any time. And like I said, I get it. I get what they were trying to do. I just don't think that it was quite worked in the first part of the episode. Mm -hmm. But once we really got the action going, that, that was good. And Morgan yeah. and Beckman together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I tell you. <clears throat> I, I think I'm even on record as saying that Morgan is not my was not my favorite character after the especially after the first season. I was just kind of I think halfway through the season I was tired of him. He was more uh, annoying than anything, and in fact I feel pretty sure that I am on record saying that. you are. I remember, <laughs> but I have to say uh, after last season and now from what I see in this season, I think that Morgan is the one that is. Doesn't he seem like the conscience of the show? Like, like that niggling little, that still small voice of the show that for everybody, you know, he brings out these truths that people dance around, while other, the other characters are dancing around, but Morgan just, you know, says, you know, says what it is, you know, this is what's going on, deal with it. Yeah. Um, and I really love that. I love that about Morgan. And it's funny and it's, um, it's kind of cold water in your face, and uh, I, I I enjoy season two and a half and three, Morgan. <laughs> I think it's, you know, he's never been the most tactful of people, and it, but in the past where it was annoying because he was just being borderline rude, now it's, 
and, and obnoxious. Now he actually is giving us insight and giving the other characters insight. And so it, it actually lends something of value to, to the show and to the character. Yeah. And of course he brings all the, um, the, um, pop culture mm-hmm. references in. There was more Star Wars stuff going on. <laughs> Uh, Which that Jedi mind trick cracked me up. <laughs> yeah, really did. These are not the boys you've been looking for. These are not the yeah. wait. No, <laughs> it almost worked. Oh, so yeah. Um, I think for me the episode started to really pick up when Jeffster came on the scene. Jeff and Lester, when they came back, they it was their first scene was hysterical. I was rolling. I mean, <laughs> day 184 on the run from the popo, and they're seven miles away. Oh no! How will they ever find you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Lester's little girl scream. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I just—they just stood there, cracked me up again. I—I'm on record as saying that I really didn't like them. I didn't like them at all, but. I tell you, they they make me laugh so hard. Sometimes I just have to press pause. In fact, I think I got a little bit behind in the chat in our live chat because of that. Oh, is that where you went? <laughs> yeah, I had to go back and replay. I was laughing so hard, I I totally lost control. <laughs> you know, I I did. I'm glad that they're back, but I really could have done without Jeff's ickiness with Ellie. Oh, well, that yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean... is there room for another one in there? <laughs> what? inappropriate (laughs) yeah that was that was that was pretty gross but it was funny that it took how many how many darts did it take to take him down like nine (laughs) (laughs) and you you know casey got some sort of sick pleasure out of doing that yeah yeah target practice (laughs) and i love that their entrance back into the buy more you know they got the slow-mo entrance with the wind machine which turned out to be Morgan with Morgan. the electric fan. <laughs> oh, it had to be. Mm-hmm. Of course. No of course one understands those guys better than Morgan. Yeah. <laughs> Who is now the manager of the Buy More? What? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering how long it was going to take for Beckman to say, you know what, this is just so not me. I can't be answering phone calls and, you know, trying to set up appointments for fixing your, you know, geek machine. <laughs> that that was a pretty clever thing to do down in the castle. She's taking tech support calls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was funny to watch. Um, funny to see her do it, but I am glad that she turned over the reins to Morgan. So now we'll see what happens. Of course, um, we'll see how the reaction from the rest of the Bymore crew goes because I remember last season. Yeah. There's not when, a lot of respect there. Yeah. And they really gave him a hard time when he was promoted before. Maybe that's the way for Big Mike to come back. Yeah. To save the day. It <laughs> could be. Save the Bymore! <laughs> Call him back from his retired life of fishing. and Yeah. Um, let's see. So we had, well, we, we should go back to the Chuck and Sarah. They did eventually kind of work things out between the two of them. And then we had that nice moment at the beginning where um, Sarah and Chuck and the whole family unit, loosely, you know, family in the use sense, loose sense of the word, was together at the apartment. And uh, Awesome's freaking out over the baby. <laughs> Sign him up for Japanese lessons. I think they should totally do that. But, yeah. you know, he's kind of freaking out. Anyway, it was nice to see that group together again in that setting. Uh, yeah, it was. And then... You know, the, the kind of offhand comment that Chuck and Sarah may be next as far as kids and marriage go. And then Chuck, shut your mouth, boy. <laughs> you know, he just gets her to unpack her suitcase and then his inner monologue takes over and he freaks her out again. Yeah. <laughs> the end of the episode. Stop yeah. while you're ahead, dude. Yeah. You know? One sleepless night for Sarah. <laughs> but that was a nice parallel, wasn't it? Because, you know, Chuck's off in slumberland. Sarah's wide mm-hmm. awake, kind of freaked out. And then we have Ellie looking at going through those old photos. And, yeah. you know, Devin, the sleep machines have worked wonders on him. 
Mm-hmm. He's zonked out, and she's up kind of worrying, missing her mom. And, mm-hmm. yeah, so that was a nice parallel. We actually got some some Sarah and Ellie stuff in this episode, and it wasn't quite, you know, the bonding girly time that I think that they really, really need, but it was nice to see the writers paralleling the two of them. Yeah, indeed. And, of course, that gave us um, a, a little bit of foundation for when Ellie meets Mama Bartowski. Yeah, she kind of opened, I don't know, they kind of opened up the door for that in this episode even more, I think, um, with Ellie. So, well done. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So what else did we have in this episode that we should talk about? Um, You know, we had, oh, Isaiah Mustafa is the new Greta. Oh, yes. He was, now that's a Greta. That's a Greta. You know, I think Olivia Munn, her part got chopped. A lot of it got left on the cutting room floor in the premiere. But Isaiah Mustafa's Greta was win. Pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. I, Mom, I don't want to be an astronaut anymore. I want to work at the buy more. <laughs> He's just too cool for his own good. <laughs> yeah. At 30, shooting at 30 feet. Yeah. I can uh, do better. Yeah. So that was pretty cool. cool. Yeah. I liked him. So, yeah, overall, it was a pretty good episode. It wasn't quite as epic for me as the premiere, but it was solid. And I think it was setting up a lot. You know, episode, the the premiere got our team back together. And then this kind of set us up for some more uh, storylines that we're going to be dealing with, at least in the first half of the the season. Including um, Casey finding out that Morgan is talking to his daughter and then Casey talking to his daughter at the end of the episode there. Yeah. Alex will be back for sure. In fact, I think she's back next week. Yeah. So, but yeah, just as Sarah was, was kind of having to deal with putting down roots. So was Casey. Yeah. And you know, I think that might be part of what had, it makes us feel a little bit off about this episode is that Casey wasn't with Chuck and Sarah on the mission. Mm hmm. You know, but oh yeah, I mean, I know that they kind of needed to have Chuck and Sarah there so they could work some things out on their own. It was a plot device and that's fine. I mean, this is a TV show, but I did miss him being there mm-hmm. with the two of them. <laughs> Although the explanation for why he wasn't after that Yves Saint Laurent incident, <laughs> you stab one person with a stiletto, <laughs> bam. <laughs> yeah. I think we need a flashback. I'm stuck at the buy more. <laughs> I think we need a flashback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my. Poor Casey. Eh, He'll get out of there. Yeah, he will. So did we hit everything? I think so. Probably not, but y'all can email us and tell us what we missed. Yeah. Yeah. And now we want to thank our sponsors, ielabs.com, makers of award-winning ActionBlue AVCHD conversion software, which offers full HD videos on regular DVD discs. It even works with HD clips with, from the newest iPhone 4, which I believe Gray has now and has having a lot of fun playing with. I hope it didn't melt down. You can get your free trial of the software at ielabs.com. We also want to thank moviemorons.com for supporting Check versus the podcast. Movie Morons is a podcast all about film, so if you are inclined to find out what movies you should be watching this fall, check out MovieMorons.com. And SyrianJunkies.de. We want to thank them for supporting us as well. Hello, this is Christina Caramel from Serien Junkies TV. Are you addicted to TV shows? Be our guests and learn the latest news and reflections on what's going on in the world of TV series. Well, our show is in German, but maybe you want to drop in anyway? Then visit www.serienjunkies.de and watch out for our video podcast. See you. And we've got, uh, we've just got one item for spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled, now's the time that you can turn us off, tune us out, and be, be sure to join us next week. And remember, if you have any questions or comments to share with us, please email us at mail at chuckpodcast.com. Be sure to join us on chucktv.net on Monday, October 4th at 8, 7 central um, for the live chat during the episode of Chuck. And we can't wait. We hope to see you there. See you soon, Chucksters. Bye-bye.
just have one spoiler for you this week. It's the episode description for number four, Chuck versus the coup d'etat. Chuck and Sarah have a communication breakdown as Awesome is reunited with someone from his brief spy past. Armand Asante returns in ge- as Generalissimo Goya. Tia Texada and McKenna Melvin also guest star. Chuck and Sarah work on becoming better communicators as they join Awesome and Ellie for a getaway to Costa Gravas. There, the gang is reunited with Generalissimo Goya, who finds himself in a dangerous situation once again. Meanwhile, back at home, Morgan embarks on a forbidden romance that may put him at odds with Colonel John Casey. Mark Christopher Lawrence and Benita Fritarisi also star in this episode. And this is the one that we saw the, uh, we got a, a twit pick of a really impressive Captain Awesome statue. That will be in this episode. Cannot wait to see what the story is there. <laughs> Yeah. This episode will air on October 10th. All right. Getting into October already. I know. And that's a wrap for this week, Chucksters. And next time we should have Gray back with us. And in the meantime, send in your questions to mail at com, And we'll see you then. Bye. Take care.